What's up lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube, I'm the Malta Activist and in this video I'm going to share with you some of my ideas for a Valentine's Day inspired food and whiskey pairing. Let's go! If you're the practical type and have decided to stay in and celebrate Valentine's Day over some fantastically home-cooked food instead of going out and spending thousands on this capitalist occasion, then this video is the one for you. I've picked some quintessentially Valentine's Day uh, food items that you can pair expertly with good whiskey. Now, it doesn't matter if your wife or girlfriend doesn't drink whiskey, at least you do. Uh, so this video is for you, but in the event that she does, hey, win-win! Can't go wrong with that, can we? So our first food pairing is with oysters. Now, uh, if you like oysters, then you know they're super delicious and an aphrodisiac, that's right. And we all need a little bit of an aphrodisiac on Valentine's Day, as if whiskey wasn't enough of an aphrodisiac, you know what I mean? Um, with oysters, not only are they delicious, they're, uh, they're exotic, they're, uh, they're fun to scrape out and eat, and you can eat them in many, many, many different ways. But the one way I really like having my oysters is pouring a little whiskey on them, right when they're in the shell. You know, uh, just a hint of, uh, just a squeeze of lemon uh, with maybe some pepper and then a dash of the whiskey of your choice. And I'll recommend not one, but two whiskeys that go so well with oysters. Um, the first one is the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. Now, this whiskey uh, is, uh, is a low strength whiskey. It has beautiful flavors of lemon, lime, citrus, pineapple, smoke, soot, tar, ash, and they, they work so well with the oysters. Uh, and I tried this uh, when I was in uh, Isla during the festival for Artbeck Day, for Lefroig Day, uh, and we, we poured all these whiskeys on our uh, oysters and had them and they were exquisite. So genuinely, I feel uh, if you get some oysters on ice and they're sitting in the middle, uh, you, can, you can pour yourself a little whiskey on top of them and they slurp them down, they taste amazing. And there's a bit of dramatic flair to the whole exercise as well, right? So because we need the drama, we need the flair on Valentine's Day, if you know what I mean. So yes, so Ardbeg WBC is uh, one of my suggestions that you can have with your oysters. The other one is the Lefroig Quarter Cask. So similar, I want to say similar flavor profiles in terms of its, uh, its, uh, its peat and its soot and its tar and its ash, but then a very different fruity flavor profile in terms of the, uh, the, the red berries and the cherries and the, uh, the, the, the licorice and black currant, you know, uh, and that also works really, really well with the oysters. The important thing is because the oysters are from the sea, they're already salty, they're already maritime. And if you just add a bit of um, uh, sweet soot char and smoke to it, it totally amplifies and elevates the flavor. So um, my advice to you, if you have oysters on ice, uh, get yourself an, a bottle of the Artbeg Wee Beastie or the Lefroy Quarter Cask, uh, pour, a little, uh, pour a little sprinkle on your oysters and slurp them down, they taste absolutely delectable. And by the way, you don't have to just keep putting them on your oysters and eating the oysters. You can, you can pour them out in a glass on the side and drink them on the side as well. And mm, that is just the most perfect combination that you can get. Like This is my favorite combination ever. So yes, the Artbeg Wee Beastie or the Lefroy Quarter Cask if you have oysters on ice. And if you haven't, why don't you? I mean, what the hell, bro? Our second food pairing is cheese. Now I know cheese typically goes with uh, a good red or white wine, but in this case, if you want to substitute uh, wine with whiskey, then I have some good suggestions for you. Okay, again, depends on the type of cheese you're using. Let's say you're using like a super tangy cheese, like an aged cheddar, uh, for example. So for that, I would recommend uh, two, maybe uh, two options of whiskeys. Uh, but the whiskeys have to be, uh, they have to be soft, they have to be subtle, they have to be very, very fruity, very floral, so that they complement, you know, they complement the tanginess of the cheese. The big, bold flavors of the cheese shouldn't be drowned out by even bigger, bolder flavors of the whiskey, right? So the whiskey needs to complement um, the cheese. So for an aged, uh, cheddar, like uh, a tangy cheese, I would highly recommend the Hibiki Harmony. Now the Hibiki Harmony is a very soft, understated whiskey. Uh, it's very sweet, uh, it's extremely palatable. Um, 
uh, women tend to like it a lot uh, just because you know for the same reason that I just mentioned you know sweet and palatable just like the men in our life you know what I'm saying yes exactly I said it so the Hibiki Harmony is one option so if you pair that with some uh, uh, aged uh, cheddar I think you do a really good job or uh, if you're uh, in the US and prefer bourbons then I don't mind the four roses uh, single batch small batch sorry the four roses small batch is a great whiskey to also complement uh, uh, tangy or aged cheddar type cheese. Um, they work really well. Uh, the, the, the bourbon cuts through the tanginess of the cheese with its sweetness uh, and really complements the entire flavor profile. So always remember, you're always complimenting. You should never get them to fight. Always get them to compliment. So if, some, so if you're eating something that's big and bold, have a whiskey that's uh, soft and palatable. But if you're having something that's um, let's say uh, 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 subtle uh, and, and understated, then you want to have a big bold whiskey that works with it. So that's, that's the formula, you know, make each one work with itself. It's like a jigsaw, it's like a jigsaw, right? And they have to fit perfectly. And uh, that's how you do it. So yes, so for um, uh, tangy cheese, go with something that's soft and sweet and fruity and palatable. And for that, I would recommend either the Four Roses uh, Small Batch or the Hibiki Harmony both work extremely well. Very different drinking experiences. So if you have both on your shelf, go for it. Now, if on the other hand, you have some soft cheese like brie, then for that, I would suggest um, something super contrasting. So because the, the brie is nice and it's soft, it's creamy, it's almost on the sweeter side, I would recommend uh, something that's slightly peated, a bit smoky, and nothing better comes to my mind than the Kilhomen Macherbe. Ooh. I have tried the Kilhomen Macher Bay with some cheese on crackers and mwah, it tastes amazing. You know, that smoke, that very, very, very soft smoke, that subtle soot, that tar and that peat uh, coupled with the sweetness works so well with the creaminess of the brie. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. Believe me, if you have that, this is what this is probably my favorite combination of the list. Uh, the Kilhomen Macher Bay with some soft brie. Uh, but if you want uh, something uh, slightly different, then I can also recommend the Balvini 12 Double Wood. Now, yes, very different whiskey from the Macher Bay, but an extremely uh, complimentary whiskey all the same. Again, uh, it has you know a no nice notes of sherry and oak, and it's quite nutty, slightly malty. Um, and again, it works with the creaminess and the fullness of the brie. So try both. You know uh, these are very very uh, common whiskeys, easily available. So chances are you might have both uh, in your bar. So there's nothing better than trying maybe a few bites of the brie with the Kilhomen Makhrebe or a few bites of the brie with the Balvini Double Wood back to back and see which one you like best. I, I frankly like both. Uh, maybe the Makhrebe more than the Balvini 12 Double Wood but definitely both of them are fantastic pairings and they will taste amazing. They will really elevate your cheese board. Who gives a shit about a 1970s Stellan Bosch? Who cares? Because you have different types of cheese on your platter, let's say you have something super aromatic like the Roquefort, and so for that, I would recommend um, uh, a nice bold whiskey that works really well. Again, remember, we're complementing flavors, all right? So with the Roquefort, I would definitely suggest the Paul John Oloroso. Now, I have said this in many, many videos. Paul John Oloroso is one of my favorite whiskeys that I've discovered in the last six months or so. And I keep recommending it with everything. And believe me, with that flavor profile uh, of uh, the whiskey and the cheese, it is a match made in heaven. You have to try it. It is just absolutely gorgeous. So if you're having a cheese like a Roquefort, it's quite aromatic, then get something that's big and bold and strong like the Paul John Oloroso. Not very high on uh, strength as well. It's about 48% but beautiful uh, flavors, lovely construction. It'll work really, really, really well with the cheese in hand. Or if you like, maybe uh, a rye whiskey would work as well. I recommend the Whistle Pig Old World Rye. Now, I had this whiskey and it just blew me away. And 
Incidentally, I did pair it with a piece of Roquefort cheese and I was like, whoa, this is this is super surprising. Just the flavors from the Roquefort and, you know, uh, and the, and the, and this this um, whistle pig is finished off in three different wine casks, actually. I don't remember all the details. Uh, all I know is that it is an exceptionally unique flavor profile and works really well with this, this type of cheese. So if there's anything aromatic, I recommend the Paul John Oloroso or the whistle pig rye of course you can choose any rye whiskey you like uh, but these are just my recommendations uh, try them I think it'll be fantastic do let me know if you do try them please anything that you do try please let me know in the comments below I, I really want to know Probably the most important dish on Valentine's Day is the steak. If you haven't made steak for your woman, what the hell are you doing? Let her go and find herself a better man because you're not it if you haven't made her a good fat ribeye steak, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, fine. So strip loins can also do. Maybe a maybe a fillet um, or a tomahawk. If you're a real man, make her a tomahawk. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And the best thing that will go with a tomahawk is a high strength bourbon. And in my opinion, the Elijah Craig single barrel is probably one of the best whiskeys that you can have with a good, good old fashioned steak. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that high strength cuts through the fat and the saltiness uh, and the sweetness and the chocolate cuts through all the uh, all the umami flavors that are in the steak and just make for this ooh, just gorgeous. Oh. Just everything, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think the Elijah Craig single barrel is probably the best whiskey you can have with a good fat steak. If not that, then I recommend another good cast strength whiskey. I'm talking about the 12 year old Red Breast cast strength, which also works wonderfully well with a good steak. Again, we're talking, the reason I'm recommending these two whiskeys is because they're high in strength, strong of flavor, and they cut to the, 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 the fat and the meatness and the, and the saltiness and the umami of the steak, and they sort of stand out on their own and they just elevate the, the protein. So definitely, if, like I said, uh, get that steak on the grill, pull it off, cut it down, make sure it's perfectly medium rare. Oh, and then serve it with a glass of the Elijah Craig single barrel or the red breast 12 year old cost strength. You will thank me and I'm guaranteeing you, you are getting LA. The last but not the least, dessert. And if it's not a chocolate dessert, it is not Valentine's Day. Now, uh, regardless of what sort of uh, chocolate dessert you make, I have two whiskeys for you that I think work really, really, really well with any type of chocolate dessert. Uh, one is the Michter's Rye. Now, you can choose for it to be the um, standard strength, which is I think 45%, or the high strength, which is in its mid 50s. It's really up to you if you want to uh, use the high strength Michter's or the regular, uh, I'll leave that up to you, but they both, I think, pack a good uh, punch. Uh, and especially with that chocolate, uh, and, if, and especially if it's a dark, dark chocolate, then those flavors become super amplified. The chocolate starts to taste better. The whiskey starts to taste better. Chocolate and whiskey is a match made in heaven, okay? Um, instead, or uh, if you don't have a Michter's right, then I would definitely suggest the Aberlour 18 Double Sherry Cost Finish, which is just the most gorgeous dram I've ever had in a long, long time. And to pair it with a chocolate dessert, oh, just absolutely stunning. Now, uh, even if you don't have uh, the Abelauer 18 double sherry cost finish, find a heavily, heavily sherried whiskey. You can go, you can maybe go with the Artbeck Ugadal if, you, if, you uh, if, you if you're on the smoky spectrum, uh, but at the same time, maybe a Glen Falklas 105 could do the trick or, uh, or a Glen Dronach single cask also works. But right now, for my recommendations, I have either the Michter's Rye uh, cast strength or the Abelauer 18 double sherry cast finish. Again, both of these whiskeys work super well with a good chocolate dessert. Damn, that was quite a list. I hope, I hope you can use uh, at least one of my suggestions and let me know in the comments below uh, how you feel about it, whether that pairing worked or it didn't. Uh, let me know. I have a full on dinner planned for my wife and the kids. Um, we have some steak, we have some cheese, we have some oysters and I'm making a chocolate dessert. 
and I'm going to pair all these um, uh, all these foods with the whiskeys that I've recommended and hopefully uh, the, hopefully the fam likes it as much as I do but even if they don't hey like I said it's my Valentine's Day also you know what I'm saying so I am definitely going to enjoy myself all right so here that's it man there you there you go there you go these are my these are my valentine's day food and whiskey pairing ideas now of course nothing is set in stone uh, i am not a chef i'm not a culinary expert these are just things that i've tried myself and i and i found out that i like them so it is what it is man um take everything with a grain of salt don't take me too seriously or this channel too seriously or you know what don't take yourself too seriously life's too fucking short man um all i want to say is hey man i hope there's love in your life and um happy valentine's day to you and to your significant other uh and uh, if you're single hey happy valentine's day to your right hand my man <laughs> i'm the multi-activist until next time peace